seen the three part that had three pedals. You've seen the half part. <laughs> there goes the cash. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flutter Mouse. We have another design today to show you from Alexei Lavrov from St. Petersburg, Russia. Alexei sent us five different variants. The first one we tested was a scaled up version of the Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrator. The second type features three flutes instead of four. The third type is just a smooth version that resembles a Manet ball. And I should mention all these slugs have the same weight. Then of course we have the big out of balance bullet. You probably remember that video. And finally today we have this prototype, a two cut one that kind of resembles a flat tip screwdriver. Oosh. And just like all the others, it's almost one and a quarter ounces Oosh. and made out of solid brass. These slugs use a sabo so there's no contact with the barrel at all. Now the brass is quite hard but the plastic is soft and that'll allow proper engagement with the rifling. We'll use this short gas seal because without a gas seal it'd be like running an engine without piston rings. But that's pretty much what all the internal components look like and we'll be burning Whoosh. 38 grains of long shot. Whoosh. Welcome back, Tough Later, folks. Hey, Jeff and OG out here with you today with something very interesting to shoot. And no, it's not this cat. <laughs> this is Brandon the Range Cat. He just wandered up on our range. He's very, very friendly. He's a feral cat that lives out here, but for some reason, super friendly. We are uh, quite a distance away from the nearest structure, and I doubt he came from there, but he's visited me out here before while I'm shooting. Today he came by to see us, so. <laughs> hey, today we're out here with you to uh, shoot yet another Alexei Lavrov. Alexei Lavrov. St. Petersburg, uh, Russia. Today we're going to shoot essentially the flat blade. It's got the two scoops on the, two scoops of raisins <laughs> in every box. Two scoops. And we're going to see how they work. See what they penetrate, what they'll plug into, what, what they won't. So Jeff has by now already shown you this on the tabletop. People hate it when I talk about this stuff over and over again. One thing I wanted to clear up on camera though, there was some discussion last week as to what our volunteer shooting dummy's name was. While Jeff was setting up cameras today, I went down there, I asked him for ID. He provided me some expired ID. I ran him against the DMV computer. As it turns out, he is legitimately Brandon. We confirm this because he's a male. He's three foot eight, which is about right. He's 10 pounds. You know it's true because he lies on his driver's license like everybody. He's actually about 12 pounds. Uh, tan hair, tan eyes. So you know that's the right guy. Regardless, he now has a driver's license. We have confirmed his name. There is no doubt anymore. There it is, folks. People don't realize that we were out here one day and you go, that guy, that, that dummy reminds me of Brandon Herrera. That's why we called him Brandon. Right. It would assume something else. People think because of that name, people infer that we are somehow getting political on this show. If you are, if you think we're getting political with that name, unwad your red, white, and blue panties because we are not as simple. His name is Brandon. It's right there on his damn driver's license. <laughs> we can't change his name to, uh, to appease everyone. So what do you call the, this version? Of I, the, I don't know, like the flathead, sure. uh, double flute. Uh, the double flute. Uh, right. The double splitting flute. wedge. Something like that, yeah. I, you know, the, the people in the comments monkey. usually have the best ideas. So if you have right. an idea, let us know. Leave your name down below. We'll probably. We're, we're definitely not trying to boost comments by doing that. No. Because we, we read the comments. We read all your comments. We answer back, though, the ones that are uh, that are intelligent and uh, not uh, overly critical. We'll delete you if you are. No. <laughs> they can they can criticize all they want. It's just people when they, do. they, they know, get insulting, you know. You Who guys needs are... that? If you guys have actually poured through the comment section, but people get plenty insulting, and you know, we leave them right there. It's best to expose everyone and let them uh, let everybody know what kind of people are out there. So. Yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, enough yapping. Let's shoot these downrange. Brandon is waiting for us. Let's see what they do. Oh, I think it went through. I saw some fluff coming out of the back. In the high speed? In high speed? Yeah. I didn't see any of that because my eyes are low speed, but uh, <laughs> this is an old one. Don't pay attention to that. I'm pretty sure this is a new one. It wrinkled this entire panel up like this, nice and tight, when we dug it out of the uh, little canvas carrier. Pretty sure that's the new hole there. And that would be the new exit. Pretty what sure. about that 
Let's take a shot at the ballistic helmet there. You want to shoot this thing again? Yeah, yeah. It's taking some good rounds. We're going to set him on the ground so that we're not aiming up over our safety berm in the back. Yeah, there is a berm back there, by the way. Yeah. People yeah. don't. That's for you, YouTube. Great, nice backstop. And it's like, oh, well, thank yeah. you. Now let's take a look at the Kronos high-speed camera footage. We can see we have excellent spin, great stability, and beautiful accuracy. And we can confirm that we have complete penetration of this military Kevlar vest. So far it's looking really good for this design. Colors dot there on his forehead. Okay, gotcha. Here we go. So I was aiming for the blue tape. We hit eh, technically blue he tape. He hit it. Not dead center, but lower left corner here, seven o'clock on the blue tape. Did it go through? You guys probably know the answer to this before I do. <laughs> um, we definitely have penetration through the Kevlar in the front. And it looks to me that is Brandon brain matter right back there. That's new fluff. Wow. Bit okay. Bit, bit and, then, and then look at that. Oh. Little, little. Both sides. Little exit hole. Okay, so. Uh, and, oh, <laughs> this is kind of funny. You got to see. Oh. Oh, look at that, he Brandon's extruded little, his brain. Brandon's little rat tail. With some Kevlar in there. Looks like he belongs in an LA street gang. <laughs> As you can see, this slug had no problem going through both the front and back of this ballistic helmet. We have yet been able to penetrate one of these helmets using a lead slug, no matter the weight or velocity. It will stop it every time. Last video, the bag of quickcrete was so popular, we're gonna try that out again and see how it, it's great for stopping things, but it also shows when things pass through because there's a nice little cloud exiting. Standing behind it, just to witness whether or not we make it through, is a, is a bottle of 7-Up's new hydraulic fluid flavor. <laughs> soda, so uh, we're gonna set them like this downrange. We also set them low to the ground so that we don't get any rounds skipping way off in the distance. Oh. Plowed right through this heavy bag of. And remember, a, a regular Foster slug in our last video, we tested a, and it, it didn't even go through. So. Yeah. But it made it all the way through this bag of grape nuts here and out the back into our, you saw it on camera, made it right through the 7-Up hydraulic fluid, splattered that everywhere. It hit this bag so hard that it kicked out a 10 millimeter shell casing. I don't even know how that even happens. <laughs> That's from my recent 10 millimeter video. Go over and check it out on OG's Danger Show. Is it out yet? It's not out yet. I haven't oh. edited it yet. Oh, we'll do that. The slug had no problem penetrating this sack of ready mix cement. Uh, there's rocks in there and all kinds of stuff, sand, and uh, probably a little tougher to penetrate than just a sandbag, actually. Heck, maybe a, just a bucket full of sand might be a good test medium. We might try that in the future. The world famous lead plate in memory of Danny. Aiming at the tape. Yep. We'll see if we'll penetrate it. I'm ready. Here we go. It went through. It hit lower than I expected. That could have been my flinch, but good grief. That These thing, things are kind of hot. They're very, very stout on the shoulder. I uh, went ahead and set my right lung on the table back there because it flew out the back. But um, yeah, I went right through here, plowed right through. You can see the shiny uh, marks of the indentation versus these weathered ones over here. And Jeff just found this on the ground. There it is. Still in its original shape, but all chewed to hell. A little warm. A little warm, but not, not Sarkisian hot. But look at that thing. And. Look where it made it out the back right here. There's, Which hole is it? There's one of its brethren right okay. there. Okay. Yeah, it, these things. So the only one it didn't go all the way through was the the uh, unbalanced one. Yeah, because it was unbalanced. Yeah. But we have found that these are some of the few, these are, I think, some of the very few rounds that have ever made it through. It doesn't matter what the configuration. The four, the little four pedal, the three pedal, 
Uh, Evan Evan had that big old two ounce slug yeah, that went through yeah, it. He did, but not the subsonic one. Not very many things will make it through that. Yep. Big giant Bitcoin. So pretty impressive. Oh, in fact, there's the other. There's the unbalanced one. Yeah, that's what I was showing earlier. Because it ca causes the yaw sideways. Yeah, or something. Slowed it down. Yeah. But that thing, Sounds man, good. chewed right through there. Yep. Now it's pretty rare that we see a 12 gauge projectile penetrate the 30 pound lead plate, but Alexi has a pretty good track record. Four out of five of his designs have penetrated this plate. So far, Greg is doing pretty well handling the very heavy recoil of these things, but he's got five more of these to shoot. Yikes. Let's target, Greg. This is a highly scientific test, Jeff. This is a, cal a roll of California ballistic gelatin labeled one two and three that's because we can count that high and <laughs> that's uh, all i can sneak out of the house <laughs> stick it to your shoe next time she won't even ask okay uh right here in the front jeff has put a little mark we're going to try and drive a slug through there um, as you've seen probably before you would think that these don't just fly right through toilet paper but sometimes toilet paper does some strange things to round so we have put well, it they're they're, they're it's a, it's a really interesting study in inertia because if you threw a baseball at it, they just fly off the table, right? Yes. If you... Strapped them down, it wouldn't. Probably not. If you shot an arrow at them, they might, the arrow might go through one and knock them all down. But what about a big old, really big slug Ooh. passing through there? Will it go all the way through or just, it's it's interesting, you know, well, what's your prediction? My prediction is we're gonna need this piece of uh, Keith Urban's ballistic vest to set behind the California <laughs> ballistic gel because- um, That is a giant vest. Right, it's Keith Urban size. Okay. He's a very slight little lady. We're gonna set this behind the, the ballistic gel just in case we need to catch the uh, penetrating round, so. That's smart. Let's get to Because I, I wanna catch another one. That slug <laughs> tore through more toilet paper than a truck driver at Taco Bell. It hit very accurately right there at the... So uh, you can't complain about his shooting? Yes, they can. Oh, okay. Eric Hill Sr. <laughs> and look at that. Plowed out the back, into number two, out the back. The uh, hole gets a little wider each time. Into number three, just like at Taco Bell. The hole gets wider each time. <laughs> And then out the back, it did hit the vest somewhere. We don't know if it went through. I think that might be a new impact right there. Yeah, we're, I'm not finding it in the vest, on the ground or anything. Well, this is what we call a BFC in science right here, Jeff. These Kevlar fibers are old and darkish yellow. These are bright new, bright yellow. That's so a I, good I point, yeah. that's new, but pretty impressive that uh, three rolls of toilet paper can stand a chance. Yep, I like it. What really fascinates me is you have these rather light rolls of toilet paper being hit with a projectile that's going oh, around 1100 miles an hour and the rolls don't even begin to really start moving until long after the projectile passes through it. The clay block is back! Alright, on the nose! Whoa. Oh! Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to have much clay left. Yeah, it's all gone. <laughs> Most impressive clay block hit we've ever seen. That was pretty devastating. We really don't have much to show you. So at this time, I'm gonna recite a little verse from Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> no, actually, Jeff downrange found this piece of, you said this was Kevlar or? Um, oh, it's polyethylene. It, it's P not It's not Kevlar, it, it's HTPE, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Milk carton stuff. Anyway, we found it <laughs> downrange. Here's what's interesting. As we started to peel this back, if you can see in there. As I peel this back, there is the slug. It is sitting with its butt down range. So we, did it did it turn and hit backwards, or did it turn? It probably after? flipped around after it went through the clay. After. How, what, is it it's, in good shape? It's in very good shape. Wow! It's, it's actually got a little scuffing around. Oh, little, it does. A little gas checks there, but not much. Wow! And it's not hot. 
Everyone thinks bullets get hot when you shoot them. It's it's when they compress and smash. They do on Sarkissian show. Look at that oh, okay. little uh, little brass skirt that kicked off. Oh, there. okay. And there's more brass down in here, but I don't know. It's pretty anticlimactic to go in here and find little tiny brass shards. Okay, I believe you. Nice I job, brass shard. <laughs> anyway. It flayed that thing open. This was able to catch it and stop it, though, so that's pretty good. Yeah. Even though it was the butt of the slug. Way hitting. to go, RTS Tactical. Yeah. We were able to reuse the ceramic, <laughs> part of the ceramic. Oh, I think you send this back to him and uh, tell him it's in great shape. And... <laughs> it will stop a Russian penetrator slug if it's going backwards. Da, darling. All right, <laughs> let's get to the next one. Now we finally have a good example of a soft target being hit by one of these slugs, and I can't believe how it just tore this thing into like little wafers we've never seen that before that's just <laughs> blows my mind okay so everybody constantly in the comment section wants us to shoot these at a little bit further ranges hunting ranges they call it 100 yards <laughs> 100 <laughs> yards shotgun. with a shotgun um, not realistic probably to reach out there with a, at 100 yards with a shotgun. You probably should be picking a you, rifle. You can hit a, a, a target, but most ask a shotgun hunter, it's, it's like 30 to 50 yards. Yes, if you want to be responsible about your kill. We want to be responsible about killing this red water jug that Jeff's got downrange. So we used Danny's laser rangefinder here and we pinged exactly 40 yards downrange. I don't know how many cabbages that is, but 40 yards downrange. And we're gonna try one of these extreme, whatever these things are called, in the smooth bore. No! Why would you want to use a smooth bore? Because. Oh, what are we talking about? I'm, <laughs> just, I'm high. I'm, I'm, I've been smoking the, the devil's cabbage, but I, I forgot we do have a rifle barrel on this one. Um, so yeah, we, these will not stabilize through a smooth bore. You yeah. got it. A lot of people are like, how come we didn't try a, a, a smooth bore? It's a, it. The same reason you don't shoot a, a rifle round out of a smooth bore. It's, yeah. It, they've got to be spun to stabilize. This is a 12 gauge Remington fully rifled barrel. So it's rifled from here to there. So uh, we are going to spin these and send them down range at 40 yards. Here we go. That looks like a hit. Now, of course, at the time, we had no idea how this thing was flying, but you can see we did not have enough spin to properly stabilize this thing. We had some kind of a malfunction. So it's kind of remarkable that Greg was able to hit this jug at all at 40 yards. But you can imagine how unstable it would be if it had no spin. So Jeff and I found this gigantic uh, Toyota Prius tire sitting over here in the grass. The thing's about a thousand pounds, so we hooked it up using this toe strap to my truck because there is no moving this thing. We couldn't even lift it onto its edge to roll it out here. That's how heavy it is. So there is a lot of rubber here. Um, we're going to try and shoot through it, see how thick these treads are. And just to witness inside, we put one of these little fiberglass. These are ballistic panels. They're actually bulletproof panels for handguns. We put this inside, so we're going to shoot through the tread and see if it happens to make a mark in here. We'll know we hit it. It might bounce off, Greg. It might <laughs> I'll duck. After I shoot, I'll duck. That'll Squint. Work. Yeah, science says that'll work perfectly. 17 yards away on the red circle. Okay. Blue tape. Oh, man. I heard something smack down. Go back to OG's tire talk. Hey, so we were actually kind of impressed. This thing hit a little bit outside the blue tape. That's probably me. The slug, however, made it through these super, super thick, super heavy treads. And if you'll come over here and take a look, we have a fiberglass, or it's a, um, it's actually a ballistic panel. It's designed for a courthouse. It is 44 Magnum rated to stop 44 Magnum pistol rounds, but that slug plowed right through there. After going through the rubber. After going through a lot of rubber. Ooh. Shot right out the back of this panel. I think I need to wash that. Um, or burn it. Yeah. <laughs> And then, take a look back here. I'm like, oh, it, what's amazing. It exited it's like, oh. And took a chunk. We were going to, we were debating whether or not to put a second panel here to witness that, but we've got an exit wound there. And check this out. That's a new strike mark on the sand. So that thing made it through two layers of very, very, very thick tire tread. Now, we don't see a lot of reaction in the high speed camera footage. Uh, 
The slug went through the first layer of tire, through the ballistic panel, and this just, I guess, confirms that we had full penetration as we can see the slug flying off into the river behind us there. Let's show what a regular foster slug does. It will fire it through a smooth bore since it's got rifling on it. And you don't want to and you don't want to let up your rifled barrel anyway. No, you don't. Um, so we're going to fire it through a smooth bore. It's a regular old slug, the kind you find in Walmart or Cabela's or any old sporting goods store. Let's see what it does to this tire. And last week we we weren't sure who sent it, and it turns Santa. out it's Terry. Oh, Terry that's sent right. it. Yeah, Terry sent me a box of ammo. I'm still working my way through it. I told him I'd remind you. Okay, a regular 12 gauge slug. Regular old feeder. Federal regular. <laughs> called a foster slug. I think it's 1275 FPS or something like that. It's a lot of FPS and S's. Yeah. Definitely not a Magnum foster slug, but this gives you an idea what a. Eh. All right, it's good enough the, for the police, it's good enough for us, right? At the magenta code octagon when you're ready. I'm ready. Here we go. Everybody duck. Holy oh, lord, there's hardly any recoil. I know, I know. Everybody duck. Holy okay, what happened? Well, our slug hit just above the tape, hit a little bit high. It hit in a little nice little circle motion, so we, we know it was pretty much flying true. Here's the cool thing. Inside we have this ballistic panel again. I saw a little mark down here. I thought might be the slug hitting it. Jeff got down there with a flashlight and looked underneath the tire and found our slug. So it made it through the thick first layer of tread. It barely even made a dent on the uh, little fiber panel, whatever you call that, ballistic panel. And then it came to came to rest, it just died right there. A lot of viewers thought when you shoot at tires like this, it's gonna bounce off and come back at you, but that's not the case. Maybe if you shot it with a BB gun, I'm, I don't know. All right, Ballistic Jelly, you guys love it. You love a little Justin Bieber, except for a couple of you who think it's creepy. Too bad. Behind it, we've got two, can't, two Kevlar body armor panels, and then behind that, we've got that HPVE or whatever the hell that was, more of a rigid panel. So we're hoping that after it makes it through the gel and leaves you a cool little wound track, sends Justin to the moon that some of this Kevlar mass back here will catch it. Maybe we'll be able to take a look at it. So Yeah, it's all science. It's all science. It's to show you the energy of the gel expansion. It's it's tremendous amount of energy. Tremendous. Tremendous. It's right there. It's science. Tre ferocious. And if it doesn't, if nothing matches up, then it's not science at all. It's just two clowns on the internet. Yeah, that's Give it. Give it a try. Okay, what happened? Well, it hit a little bit lower than the star, but that's to be expected because of the Coriolis effect, right? Okay. <laughs> no, uh, the slug hit the bottom, hit below the star where I was aiming. However, check this out. I'm gonna show you the bottom of the gel because you can see the wound track the best. The round hit there you saw in probably the lower third of this gel. Went through here, made a just tremendous, probably- Ferocious. Probably two and a half inches across um, wound track narrowed off again then you can see it kind of spinning again here it went sideways it looks like it's yawing and then it dove down and exited our gel but barely it almost wanted to escape it popped out the bottom of the gel it hit two soft ballistic panels tore right through them this little whatever you call this weird stuff <laughs> caught it and we found it out here about six feet away laying on the sand this thing was out eight feet away so um, the slug itself has a little sunburn on one side. I don't even know what that's from. I don't know. But other than that, the slug is just about in perfect shape. Now in conclusion, a projectile is normally good at either penetrating or really good at energy transfer. But with this projectile, we saw both. We saw tremendous penetration through every target we had, but we also saw in the gel here, a lot of energy transfer. It threw that block, you know, way off the table it threw Justin Bieber way off the table and everything very impressive projectile I must say it's interesting to see how those little flutes right there act almost like a snow plow they shove their way through material and make a nice big wound track I mean it's pretty impressive stuff so yep if this was to be used against uh, some kind of an animal or something for hunting not rhinoceros a rhinoceros 
Tyrannosaurus Rex, Blue Whale, whatever you're hunting with a shotgun. I loaded these things hot. These things are about a one and a quarter ounce, probably 17, 1800 feet per second. Yeah, they had a good wallop to them that was like a mule kick. And I shot, what, nine of these today? Yeah. So uh, they were a pretty good thump. Yep. A seismic thump, one could say. Ah. Impressive round. We thank you guys for coming out here and hanging out with us and watching this thing uh, perform in all these different medium out here. So it was a fun test for us to run, and I hope it was fun for you guys to watch. Thank you very much. And uh, if you're super bored, swing over to OG's Danger Show. Link in the description, maybe. And we'll see you over there for some, uh, some more gun action. The seismic, two and a half ounces. Wow, that's a lot of ounces. Let's try it through one of Jeff's guns in case it blows up. <laughs> this is a smooth bore, correct? Yeah. Smooth bore, the seismic, you, you saw Brianna and what's her name? Jamie. Tall legs, Jamie. Super legs or something like that. Where, where's your hearing protection? I do need that. Justin Bieber's on the ground. It's gonna kick hard now, remember. I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. That was, uh, that was stout, but not too crazy. Okay. I didn't feel like that was, uh, that was like a congratulatory slap on the shoulder from Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> now for all you folks that wanted to see OG shoot this two and a half ounce slug, well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you take the time to rate the video, we really do appreciate that. Now, despite all the new rules on YouTube, we're still doing pretty well. In fact, we've been telling our current Patreon supporters to cut back or eliminate their pledge. Have you ever heard a channel tell you that, that they want less money? <laughs>